Most confetti looks fun for one second, and then it lags your browser and completely ruins the moment. Today, we're building eight different effects that feel premium, but more importantly, they stay buttery smooth. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pixel Perfect. You know this is the place where we take those tiny UI details and turn them into serious product level polish. Stick around to the end, because you'll walk away with a complete toolkit you can drop into any project that needs a moment of celebration. So what are we building? Let's run through them quick. We've got the classic burst. That's your clean center stage blast. Fireworks for those staggered pops with custom timing. Snowfall with slow drifting circles. School pride where you can plug in any two brand colors. Emoji shapes, hearts, stars, you name it. Rainbow rain, a non-stop stream from both sides of the screen. A countdown timer that ends with a blast and my personal favorite, the spiral, a contained celebration that erupts right inside the button itself. Here's what you're actually going to learn. How to map simple slider controls directly to motion. How to lock your buttons to prevent stacked intervals. When to use a simple timer versus request animation frame. The math for converting an element's center point into a viewport origin. And finally, how to batch your particle counter and respect a user's reduced motion preference. This stuff takes a surprising amount of effort to put together, so if you're liking this deep dive into UI polish, it really helps me out if you press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's what tells me to make more videos just like this one. And after you're done here, definitely check out the other UI deep dives waiting for you. Now, let's look at the HTML structure. It's built for clarity and function. We start with a simple body tag. Everything inside is wrapped in a main div with a class of container. This is our max width centering element, a classic container pattern. Inside, we have a header. This isn't just any header. It's got a flexbox layout for the logo. We have a div with a magic wand icon from Font Awesome, sitting right next to our H1 title. And right below that, a paragraph with a class of subtitle to explain what the page is all about. Clean, semantic, and straightforward. The real meat of the page is the next div, Demos Container. This is where the magic happens. This div uses a CSS grid layout to automatically arrange all the demo cards inside it. It's responsive right out of the gate. On a big screen, you get multiple columns. On mobile, it stacks into a single scrollable column. Now each demo card is its own little universe. There are eight of them, each following the same consistent pattern, a div with a class of demo card. Inside each card, we have a demo icon, a title, a description paragraph, and then the interactive parts. The controls are built with a controls div, which groups together several control group divs. Each group contains a label and an input element, usually a range slider, but we also have color pickers and a select dropdown. Every single input and button has a unique ID. This is absolutely critical because our JavaScript is going to use these IDs to grab the values and attach the click events. Finally, at the bottom of the body, we have two crucial script tags. The first one pulls in the Canvas Confetti library from a CDN. This is the engine. The second script links to our own main.js file. That's our driver. It's where we write the logic to connect our beautiful interface to that powerful library. And that's the entire structure. It's a thoughtful, semantic setup that gives us a perfect foundation to style with CSS and bring to life with JavaScript. All right, let's break down the CSS. This is where we turn that basic HTML into a modern, polished interface. It's all about smart defaults and thoughtful details. We start with the universal selector. This is a classic, opinionated reset. It zeroes out margin and padding on every single element. And importantly, it sets box sizing to border box. This one move saves us from a million layout headaches because padding and borders no longer add to an element's total width. It just makes sense. Next up, the root pseudo class. This is our design system in a box. We define a full color palette using custom properties. 
Things like dash dash B dash G for the background, dash dash surface for cards, dash dash text for primary color, and dash dash accent for our main brand color. This means we can change the entire theme of the site in one place. It's professional and maintainable. The HTML and body styles are next. We set height to 100% to allow for gradient backgrounds. And speaking of backgrounds, that's not a flat color. It's a subtle layered radial gradient that adds depth and a premium feel without being distracting. We also set our font family to enter here with a robust fallback stack and enable anti-aliasing for smoother text on modern screens. The container class is our workhorse. It gives the entire page a max width, centers it with margin auto, and adds comfortable padding. This is a non-negotiable for any well-designed content layout. Now, the header. We use Text Align Center to keep everything neat and centered. The logo itself is a flexbox container, aligning the icon and the text horizontally with a small gap. The logo icon is a perfect example of detail work. It's a grid container to center the icon perfectly, has a border radius, and uses our custom properties for color and a soft background. The main title, the H1, is a standout. It uses the clamp function for responsive font sizing, so it scales smoothly between a minimum and maximum size. And it's not just text, it has a linear gradient text effect, achieved with background clip text and a transparent text fill color a tiny detail that makes a huge difference. The real magic for the layout is the demos container. This is where CSS Grid does the heavy lifting. The rule is, grid template columns repeat auto fit, min max 300 pixels, one fraction unit. In plain English, that means fit as many 300 pixel columns as you can into the space and let them all grow equally. It's fully responsive with one line of code, the gap property adds consistent spacing between each card. Each demo card is a masterpiece of micro interactions. It has a background, a border, a generous border radius, and a soft shadow, all using our custom properties. But the best part is the hover state. When you hover, the card translates up on the Y axis by negative two pixels, the shadow gets deeper, and the border color subtly changes. This is what makes the interface feel alive and tactile. The demo buttons are another great touch. They use margin top auto inside a flex column layout. This is a fantastic little trick. It pushes the button to the bottom of the card, no matter how tall the card's content is, keeping all the buttons perfectly aligned in a row. The controls section has a light background of its own, a border, and uses flex direction column to stack the control groups vertically. Each control group is itself a flex box, aligning the labels and inputs on a horizontal axis and justifying the content between them. And we can't forget the particles counter. It's set to position fixed, pinning it to the bottom right of the viewport. It uses flex box again to align the icon and text and has its own styles to make it look like a little notification badge. Finally, the media query at the very end. This is our mobile-first responsiveness in action. Below 768 pixels, we change the grid to a single column and stack the controls vertically by switching the flex direction to column. This ensures the experience is just as clean and usable on a small phone screen. The thinking here is all about creating a robust, scalable system, not just styling individual elements. It's what separates a quick prototype from something you'd actually ship. Now for the JavaScript. This is where we connect our beautiful interface to the powerful Confetti engine. The logic is clean, modular, and each demo teaches a different concept. First, we set up a global particle counter. It's a simple variable that starts at zero, and we grab a reference to the span element that will display the count. The update counter function is a nice little utility. It adds the new particles to the total, updates the DOM, and then sets a timeout to reset the counter back to zero after 10 seconds. It's a thoughtful touch that keeps the UI from getting cluttered with old numbers. Now, let's walk through the demos. The pattern for each one is the same. 
find the button, listen for a click, grab the values from the relevant input elements, and then pass those values as configuration to the confetti function. Demo 1, the classic burst, is our baseline. It shows the simplest use case. We get the particle count and spread values from the range sliders, pass them in, and fire the confetti from an origin point about 60% down the screen. It's straightforward, but it immediately gives the user control. Demo 2, the fireworks show, is where things get more interesting. This one uses set interval. We get the number of explosions and the delay between them. Then we set up an interval that fires every few milliseconds. Each time it fires, it calculates a random X and Y origin point somewhere in the top portion of the screen and launches a confetti burst from there. We keep track of the count, and when we've hit the requested number of explosions, we clear the interval. This is how you create a sequence of events. Demo 3, Gentle Snowfall, is a masterclass in configuring the library's physics. We're not just changing visuals, we're changing behavior. We set the shape to circles only, the color to white, and then we tweak the gravity and drift properties to make the particles fall slowly and sway side to side. The slider for speed actually controls the gravity value. A lower gravity means a slower fall. This transforms the confetti into a completely different effect, snow. Demo 4, School Pride, is all about user-defined colors. Instead of range inputs, we use color inputs. Our script grabs the hex values from these inputs and passes them directly into the confetti function's colors array. It's a dead simple way to let users personalize the experience. Demo 5, Celebration Shapes, taps into the library's emoji support. Based on the user selection from the dropdown, we build an array of emojis. The configuration is key here. We set shapes, emoji, and then use shape options to define which emojis to use. The high spread and scalar make them big and floaty. It's a fun, playful twist. Demo 6, Rainbow Rain, is our most advanced animation loop. It uses request animation frame for buttery smooth performance. We calculate an end time based on the duration slider. Then we define a function that fires two confetti bursts, one from the left side of the screen, one from the right, at specific angles to create a continuous rain effect. The function checks if the current time is still before the end time, and if it is, it calls itself again with request animation frame. This creates a seamless, performance-friendly loop for the entire duration. Demo 7, Countdown Confetti, is about user feedback and state management. When the button is clicked, we immediately disable it to prevent multiple timers from stacking up. We then use Set Interval to create a timer that ticks down every second, updating the DOM to show the time left. Only when the timer hits zero do we clear the interval, re-enable the button, and finally launch the confetti. It's a solid lesson in managing user expectations during a delay. Finally, Demo 8, the spiral in button, is the piece de resistance. This uses a custom helper function called spiral confetti in element. This function is pure math magic. It calculates the exact center of the button that was clicked. Then, using request animation frame, it plots a spiral path inside the button's boundaries. For each frame of the animation, it calculates a new point on that spiral, converts those pixel coordinates into a normalized viewport origin, and fires a small packet of confetti from that exact point. The result is a beautiful contained explosion that feels incredibly premium and custom. It's a brilliant effect. The real beauty of this entire script is that each demo is self-contained. They don't interfere with each other, and they each showcase a different way to control and think about animation on the web. It's practical, powerful, and a lot of fun to use. And there you have it. Eight buttery smooth confetti effects, a fully interactive UI, and not a single bulky animation framework in sight. You've now got a complete toolkit to add a moment of celebration to any project clean code, total control, and a seriously polished result. If this deep dive into practical front-end magic helped you out, I've got a small request. 
Let's see if we can hit over 100 likes on this video. That like button is the absolute best way to tell me you want more content just like this. I'll be pinning the complete source code for this entire project in the very first comment down below. Grab it, tear it apart, and use it in your own work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.